Hi there! Today we're going to look at grid references, which are used to find exact locations on many maps. Firstly, we'll explain some map terminology, Eastings and Northings. Then we will explore how we read and use four-figure grid references. Finally, we'll look at six-figure grid references, which we will use to be a bit more precise, or when we're working with maps that have large scales. So let's get going! Grid references are used to accurately locate places on many maps. Every Ordnance Survey, or OS map, has a grid, which is generally shown using numbered lines. These numbers are used to identify the lines. The vertical lines are called Eastings, as their numbers increase towards the east. The horizontal lines are called Northings, as their numbers increase towards the north. These grid lines make squares called grid cells, which can be identified using four-figure grid references. When giving any grid reference, the Eastings are given first, followed by the Northings. In the case of a four-figure grid reference, the point on the bottom left of the grid cell is used to find the reference. For example, in this map, with a scale of 1 to 50,000, the church in Farringdon lies in this box here. To find the four-figure grid reference, we can see that the bottom left corner of the square lies on the Easting 01 and the Northing 91. So, if we put these together, we find that its grid reference is 0191. Sometimes though, four-figure grid references aren't precise enough. This is especially the case for maps with larger scales. This means that the grid cells are larger to show more information, so you need to be more precise to be able to exactly locate particular features. For example, if we take a larger scale view of the same area of Farringdon from the last example, but now at a 1 to 25,000 scale, we can see that the grid cell is a bit too big to provide a precise location of the church. So, the way we figure out a six-figure grid reference is to mentally divide our cell of interest, so in this case the cell defined by the four-figure grid reference, 0191, into a 10 by 10 grid. If we use our imagination to zoom in on the cell, this is what we can see. When finding a six-figure grid reference, we're looking for the closest intersection of these smaller grid lines to our point of interest. In this case, the church is found closest to this point here. The closest easting reference is 8 squares along 01, and the closest northing is 2 small squares up from 91. So, the six-figure grid reference of this church is 018912. Notice how the 01 and 91 stay the same as our four-figure reference, since we're in the same area. We're just being a little bit more precise by adding the extra number to show where we are in the grid cell. And that's all you need to know about how to read grid references. They're a great way of accurately locating places on a map. Firstly, we learnt that areas can be split up into Eastings and Northings. Then, we looked at how to calculate a four-figure grid reference. This involves taking the bottom left-hand corner of the grid square and reading the Easting, followed by the Northing. The reference refers to the whole area within that grid square. For larger scales, six-figure grid references may be more appropriate, as the distances within Eastings and Northings are too large. In order to do this, we use our imagination to further subdivide the grid square into a 10 by 10 grid. Then, we read the closest Eastings and Northings, once again from the bottom left, to create our six-figure grid reference. Thanks for listening everyone, and see you next time!